The gold medal, the AIA's highest honor, is bestowed in recognition of a significant body of work of lasting influence on the theory and practice of architecture. Here is a look at the amazing work of this year's recipient. At a time when there were few women in the professional world, when we weren't even allowed to vote, Julia was a real trailblazer. She paved the path, not just for women architects, but for all women. She faced many challenges in the male-dominated architecture industry. She is a living proof that no matter the obstacles, no matter the status quo, you can achieve greatness. Julia Morgan loved architecture, and she loved sharing architecture with people. So she didn't make a difference between what William Randolph Hearst wanted to what the Berkeley Women's Club wanted. She was a client's architect. She would listen to the client, and through their eyes, she would develop something that was important to them. So the client always felt very much a part of the process created a style that brought culture and nature together. She designed with meaning and she designed with purpose because she wanted to improve the quality of their lives. She wanted to enhance communities and she even allowed her work to become a catalyst for societal change, especially in furthering the lives of women. And considering the social milieu at the time, to think that her work would play such a significant role is, is really remarkable. Well, I think the key thing is uh, that she's a professional. She was a consummate artist. Uh, she took her education seriously. And she loved math and, and physics and music. She was very good at violin and she was very good at piano. So she was just tenacious in, and focused in anything that she tried from a little child many, many times the only woman. She was the only woman in her class at Cal in her civil engineering class. She was the only woman in her atelier in Paris. She was the first woman in the world to be admitted to Le Col de Beaux-Arts. Her grace while dealing with these types of obstacles was amazing. In 1906, Julia Morgan helped with disaster recovery after the earthquake, rebuilding the Fairmont Hotel. The ceilings had fallen seven feet. The beautiful atrium had melted, and Julia Morgan was part of the group that was chosen, really, to show that San Francisco was not Pompeii. She was one of the few people at that time who really understood concrete. The Greek theater had to be built in time for uh, Teddy Roosevelt to come give the commencement address. She placed 6,000 yards of concrete as the supervising architect the contractor was so impressed with her that he asked her to design and build him uh, the first reinforced concrete house on the West Coast. She showed that reinforced concrete could be used in seismic country. She started San Simeon in 1919 and it was job number 503 for her firm. She designed more than 700 buildings in her career. Hearst first asked her to come to the hilltop uh, by having two saddled horses uh, at the end of the taxi road, and she said, I'm 47, I've never been on a horse. That's not changing today. So they got to the hilltop by putting her in the taxi, driving it up the trails and using the horses to pull when the going got tough. San Simeon took 28 years to build. Asilomar took almost that long, 15 years. It was Julia Morgan's second lengthiest project and the largest arts and crafts complex of its kind. And the trusses, which you can see above, they're just natural tree limbs. And she had a good sense of structure to know that it would survive and add the character of playfulness to the living room. Asilomar says to me that it is really possible for the profession of architecture to yield so much fun, pleasure, and comfort
because she's just a, a spectacular American architect who happens to be a, a female. She was, however, selected by the women's movement to be their architect. She did a hundred buildings for women and women's organizations. She did YWCA's, she did community centers. These women raised their own money, used their own resources, and hired her. She designed in a very broad range, and always successfully. I'm a member of the Berkeley City Club. I swim in that pool several times a week. There's a range from the ornate to the very modest, the unassuming. However, it is Julia Morgan's ordinary that manifests itself in extraordinary ways. She made these beautiful light fixtures out of recycled materials for the Berkeley City Club, which was an organization that didn't have so much money. It's just wonderful blending of natural uh, materials, usually from the area where the buildings are constructed. Sustainability did not exist the way we know and see it now. Her approach is innovative, yet very practical. She moderated local climate to improve comfort conditions, and she does that primarily through passive design, uh, adaptability, and uh, resource conservation, all of the aspects that are very relevant to us today. Julia Morgan had modern solutions uh, to architectural problems, even though she was using um, historic precedents in her design. Her spaces, they are based on simple geometry that is inherent with accommodating a range of functions, making the spaces very resilient to change, and they're able to absorb changing culture and lifestyle over the decades. Miss Morgan, as she was always known, she was so devoted to her work and to her calling that her structures and her buildings were her friends and family and children, really. And they have grandchildren. It's just as alive as, as we are. We look back and we try to imagine what life must have been like for these real pioneer women uh, at that time. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed at her will, her determination, and how much she accomplished. I'm so proud of her. We are very proud to posthumously award the AI Gold Medal to Julia Morgan, FAIA, the early 20th century architect whose copious output of quality work secured her position as the first great female American architect. Here to accept for Ms. Morgan is the grandniece of Julia Morgan, Ellen North, who is accompanied by Ms. North's, Ms. North's daughter, Lauren Woodland. And it is most appropriate that AIA fellow Beverly Willis has agreed to share her thoughts on Julia, representing, as she does, a California architect who ran her own solo practice for over four decades, starting in 1958, the year after Julia Morgan died, and I might add, the year I was born. <laughs> 
And like Julia, Ms. Willis has a portfolio of over 700 notable and award-winning projects. Ladies and gentlemen, Beverly Willis. It is a great honor and a historic moment to be here speaking on behalf of Julia Morgan. In 1978, as president-elect of the California Council, I stood before this august body to present a motion and argue successfully that the AIA must support the Equal Rights Amendment, saying in part, and I quote, I believe that architecture is concerned about people as well as concrete and steel. Architects are committed to the concept of human service and to the social improvement of this nation. The AIA should reaffirm its moral commitment as architects to the goals and ideals of architecture and humanity." End quote. Today, by awarding the gold medal to Julia Morgan, you have taken a huge step towards this goal, and from my heart, and as a woman, I thank you. Change does not come easily or quickly. Julia Morgan had the best available education in engineering and architecture, and became a master builder, managing all facets of development and construction, from design plans and details, to managing warehouses of material, arranging supply and delivery, resolving construction details, and developing custom-crafted decorative finishes and elements. Morgan was highly engaged in the structural art and efficiency of buildings, using the structure expressively. She innovated the use of reinforced concrete as a stabilizing material for seismic areas, Example, the Mills College Campanile, while bringing structural rationalism to a new height. After the great San Francisco earthquake and fire of 1906, she was one of a small handful of architects with the skills capable of re rebuilding many of the city's monumental public and commercial buildings, like Knob Hill's Fairmont Hotel destroyed in 1906. She was a master of exquisite de detailing, like that in the Hearst Office Building in Los Angeles. Long before HVAC systems were invented, she demonstrated sustainable design through her climate-responsive designs that provided natural comfort in buildings. Morgan was a contemporary of another master builder, Frank Lloyd Wright. Both trained as engineers and started their own practices about the same time. Both embraced their regional roots and let vernacular re regionalism inform their building designs. Both were fascinated by the arts and crafts movement. Both worked on a portfolio of seven to 800 projects during their lifetime. As each of their practices and reputations grew, both designed a variety of large commercial and cultural buildings, some of which today draw hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. Morgan's Hearst Castle attracts as many as a million a year. But these two great architects differed in two significant ways. The first, to state the obvious, one was a female, the other male. The second, and equally complex, Wright loved to talk and write, never hesitating to proclaim himself the world's greatest architect. Morgan was quite the opposite. As she said, she was not a talking architect, nor did she leave any theoretical writings about her work. She believed that her buildings would speak for her and to future generations. Perhaps a noble notion, but it was also a naive one. Wright's work became well known. 
Morgan's work remained unknown. Julia Morgan died in 1957. I opened my design studio in Hawaii in 1955 and moved my studio to San Francisco in 1958, missing her by a year. But more importantly, I had never heard about her. She was not in the history books or known past her death. And it would not be until 31 years later Sarah Holmes Bupel would write the first monograph on Morgan's work. We women who graduated in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s were denied a phenomenal role model of an incredible designer and a successful practitioner. Would you believe that as recently as 1978, when we were discussing the Equal Rights Amendment, that the president of the AIA declared to the press that he would never hire a woman architect? On behalf of these women practitioners, I express our collective and respectful anger. Historically important women designers are still not in the history books. But conversely, at this moment, on this day, in the history of the AIA, I express our collective joy. And in conclusion, I return to my words from 36 years ago. The AIA must reaffirm its moral commitment as architects to the goals and ideals of architecture and humanity. With the award of this gold medal to Julia Morgan today, which her family proudly accepts, the AIA has indeed reaffirmed its commitment as architects to its democratic ideal. This is a proud moment for us all. Thank you.